six easy pieces. Let's roll the intro. Basic Physics Introduction In this chapter, we shall examine the most fundamental ideas that we have about physics, the nature of things as we see them at the present time. We shall not discuss the history of how we know that all these ideas are true. You will learn this detail in due time. The things with which we concern ourselves in science appear in myriad form and with a multitude of attributes. For example, if we stand on the shore and look at the sea, we see the water, the waves breaking, the foam, the shoshing motion of the water, the sound, the air, the winds and the clouds, the sun and the blue sky and light. There is sand and there are rocks of various hardness and remanence, color and texture. There are animals and sweat, hunger and diseases and the observer on the beach. There may be even happiness and thought and other spot in nature has a similar variety of things and influences. It is always as complicated as that no matter where it is. Curiosity demands that we ask questions, that we try to put things together and try to understand this multitude of aspects as perhaps re resulting from the action of a relatively small number of elemental things and forces acting in an infinite variety of combinations. For example, is the sand other than the rocks? That is, is the sand perhaps nothing but a greater number of very thin stones? Is the moon a great rock? If we understood rocks, would we also understand the sand and the moon? Is the wind a slowsling of the air analog to the slowsling motion of the water in the sea? What common features do different moments have? What is common to different kinds of sound? How many different colors are there? And so on. In this way, we try gradually to analyze all things, to put together things which are at first sight look different with the hope that we may be able to reduce the number of different things and thereby understand them better. A few hundred years ago, a method was devised to find partial answer to such questions, observations, reasons and experiment make up what we call the scientific method. We shall have to limit ourselves to be a bare description of our basic view of what is sometimes called fundamental physics or fundamental ideas which have arisen from the application of the scientific method. What do we mean by understanding something? We can imagine that this complicated array of moving things which constitutes the world is something like a great chess game being played by the gods and we are observers of the game. We do not know what the rules of the game are. All we are allowed it to do is to watch playing. Of course, if we watch long enough, we may eventually catch on to a few of the rules. The rules of the game are what we mean by fundamental physics. Even if we knew every rule, however, we might not be able to understand why a particular move is made in the game. Merely because it is too complicated and our minds are limited. If we play chess, you must know that it is easy to learn all the rules and yet it is often very hard to deselect the best move or to understand why a player moves as he does. So it is in nature only much more so, but we may be able to at least find all the rules. Actually we do not have all the rules now. 
every once in a while something like castling is going on that we still do not understand aside from not knowing all the rules what we really can explain in terms of those rules is very limited because almost all situations are so enormously complicated that we cannot follow the play of the game using by the rule much less tell what is going to happen next we must therefore limit ourselves to more basic question of the rule of the game if we know the rule we consider that we understand the world how can we tell whether the rule which we guess at are really right if we cannot analyze the game very well they are roughly speaking three ways first there may be situation where nature has arranged or we arrange nature to be simple and to have so few parts that we can predict exactly what will happen and thus we can check can figure out exactly a second good way to check rules is in terms of less specific rules derived from them for example the rule on the move of pi soap on a chess board is that it moves only on the diagonal one can did use no matter how many moves may be made that a certain bishop will always be on a red square so without being able to follow the detail we can always check our idea about the bishop's motion by finding out whether it is always on a red square of course it will be for a long time until all of a sudden we find that it is on a black square what happened of course is that in the meantime it was captured another pawn crossed by winning and it turned into a bishop a black square that is the way it is in the physics for a long time we will have a rule that works excellently it is an overall way even when we cannot follow the detail and then sometime we may discover a new rule from the point of view of basic physics the most interesting phenomena are of course in the new place the place where the rule do not work not the places where they do work that is the way in which we discover new rules the third way to tell whether our ideas are right is relatively crude by probably the most powerful of them all that is by rough approximations when we may not be able to tell why alkin moves the particular piece perhaps we can roughly understand that he is gathering these pieces around a king to protect it more or less since that in the sensible thing to do in the circumstances in the same way we can often understand na- nature more or less without being able to see what every little piece is doing in term of understanding of the game at first the phenomena of nature were roughly divided into classes like heat electricity mechanics magnetism properties of substance chemical phenomena light or optics x rays nuclear physics gravitation meson phenomena etc however the aim is to complete nature as different except of one set of phenomena that is the problem in basic theoretical physics today to find the law behind experiment to amalgamate these classes historically we have always been able to amalgamate them but as time goes on new things are formed we were amalgamating very well when all of a sudden x rays were found then we amalgamated some more and mesons were found therefore at any stage of the game it always looks rather messy a great deal in amalgamate but there are always many wires or threads hanging out in all direction that is the situation today which we shall try to describe some historic examples of amalgamations are the following first take heat and mechanism when atoms are in motion the more motion the more heat the system contains and so heat and all temperature effects can be represented by the law of mechanism another tremendous amalgamation was the discovery of the relation between electricity magnetism and light which were found to be different aspects of the thing which we call today the electromagnetic field another amalgamation in the unification of chemical phenomena 
the various properties of various substances and the behavior of atomic particles which is in the quantum mechanics of chemistry the question is of course is it going to be possible for amalgamation everything and merely discover that this world represent different except of one thing nobody knows all we know is that we we'll go long we find that we can amalgamate pieces and then we find some pieces that do not fit and we keep trying to put the jigsaw puzzle together whether there are finite number of pieces and whether there is an even border to the puzzle uh, are of course and known it will never be known until we finish the picture if never what we wish to here is to see what extent this amalgamation process has gone on and what the situation is at present in understanding basic phenomena in terms of the smallest set of principle to express it in a simple manner what are things made up of and how few elements are there physics before 1920 it is a little difficult to begin at once with the present view so we shall first see how things looked in about 1920 and then take a few things out of that picture before 1920 our world picture was something like this the stage on which the universe goes in the three dimensional space of geometry as described by equil and things change in the medium called time the element on the stage are particles for example the atom which have some properties first the property of inertia if a particle is moving it keeps on going in the same direction unless forces act upon it the second element then is forces which were then thought to be of two varieties first an enormously complicated detail a kind of interaction force which held the various atoms in different combinations in a complicated way which determine whether salt would dissolve faster or slower when we raise the temperature the other force that was known was a long range interaction a smooth and quiet attraction which varied inversely as the square of the distance and was called gravitation this law was known and was very simple why things remain in motion when they are moving or why there is a law of gravitation was of course not known a description of nature is what we are connected with here from this point of view then a gas and indeed all matter in a mystery of moving particle thus many of the things we saw while standing at the sea shore can immediately be connected first the pressure this comes from the collision of the atom with the wall of whatever the drift of the atoms if they are all moving in one direction on the average is wind the random internal motion are the heat there are waves of excess density where too many particles have collected and so as they rush off they push up piles of particles farther out and so on this wave of excess density is sound it is a tremendous achievement to be able to understand so much some of these things were described in the previous chapter what kind of particle are there there were considered to be 92 at that time 92 kinds of atoms were ultimately discovered they had different names associated with their chemical properties the next part of the problem was what are the short range forces why does carbon attract one oxygen or perhaps two oxygen but not three oxygen what is the machinery of interaction between atoms is it gravitation the answer is no gravity is entirely too weak but imagine a force analog to gravity varying inversely with the square of the distance 
by enormously more powerful and having one difference in gravity everything attracts everything else but now imagine that there are two kinds of things and that this new force which is the electrical force of course has the property that like repel but unlike attract the things that carries this strong interaction is called charge then what do we have suppose that we have two unlike that attracts each other a plus and a minus and that they stick very close together suppose we have another charge some distance away would it fail an attraction it would fail particularly known because if the first two are equal in size the attraction for the one and the repulsion for the another balance out therefore there is very little force at any appreciable distance on the other hand if we get very close with the extra charge attraction arises because the repulsion of likes and attraction of unlikes will tend to bring unlikes closer together and push like farther apart and the repulsion will be less than the attraction this is the reason why the atoms which are constituted out by plus and minus electric charge feel very little force when they are separated by appreciable distance aside from gravity when they come close together they can see inside each other and rearrange their charges with the result that they have a very strong interaction the unlimited basis of an interaction between the atom is electrical since this force is so enormous all the pluses and all minuses will normally come together in as intimate a combination as they can all things even ourselves are made up of fine grain enormously strongly interaction plus and minus part or neatly balance out once in a while by accident we may rub off a few min- minus or few plus usually it is easier to rub off minuses and in those circumstances we find the force of electricity unbalanced and we can then see the effects of this electrical attractions to give an idea of how much stronger electricity is than gravitation consider two grains of sand a millimeter across 30 meter apart if the force between them were not balanced if everything attracted everything else instead of like rippling so that there were no cancellations how much force would there be there would be a force of 3 million tons between the two you see there is very very little axis of defect of the number of negative or positive charges necessary to produce appreciable electrical effects this is of course the reason why you cannot see the difference between an electrical charge and uncharged things so few particles are involved that they hardly make a difference in the weight or size of an object with this picture the atoms were easier to understand they were thought to have a nucleus and the center which is positively electrical charge and very massive and the nucleus is surrounded by a certain number of electrons which are very light and negatively charged now we go a little ahead in our story to remark that in the nucleus itself there were found two kinds of particles protons and neutrons almost of the same weight and very heavy the protons are electrically charged and the neutrons are neutral if we have an atom with six protons inside its nucleus and this is surrounded by six electrons the negative particle in the ordinary world of matter are all electrons and these are very light compared with the protons and neutrons which make nuclei this would be atom number 6 in the chemical table and it is called carbon atom number 8 is called oxygen etc because the chemical properties depend upon the electrons on the outside and in fact only upon how many electrons there are so the chemical properties of a substance depend only on a number the number of electron the whole list of ele- elements of the chemist really could have been called one 
टू थ्री फोर फाइव एक्सेट्रा इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंग कार्बन वी कुड से एलिमेंट सिक्स मीनिंग सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स बट ऑफकोर्स वैन द एलिमेंट्स वे फर्स्ट डिस्कवर्ड इट वॉज नॉट नोन दैट दे कुड बी नंबर दैट वे एंड सेकेंडली इट वुड मेक एवरीथिंग लुक रै द कॉम्प्लिकेटेड इट इज बेटर टू हैव नेम्स एंड सिम्पल्स फॉर दिस थिंग्स रैथर दैन टू कॉल एवरीथिंग बाय नंबर मोर वॉज डिस्कवर्ड अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रिकल फोर्स द नेचर इज इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंटरैक्शन इज दैट टू ऑब्जेक्ट सिंपली एट्रैक्ट इच अदर प्लस अगेंस्ट माइनस हाउ एवर दिस वॉज डिस्कवर्ड टू बी इन एडिकुएट आइडिया टू रिप्रेजेंट इट अ मोर एडिकुएट रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द सिचुएशन इज टू से दैट द एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ द पॉजिटिव चार्ज इन सम सेंस डिसॉर्ट्स और क्रिएट अ कंडीशन इन स्पेस सो दैट वेन वी पुट द नेगेटिव चार्ज इन इट फील्स अ फोर्स दिस पोटेंशियली फॉर प्रोड्यूसिंग फोर्स इज कॉल इलेक्ट्रिकल फील्ड When we put an electron in an electric field we say it is pulled when they have two rules a charge make a field and b charges field have forces on them and move the reason for this will become clear when we discuss the following phenomena if we were to charge a body say the comb electrically and then place a charged piece of paper at a distance and move the comb back and forth the paper will respond by always pointing to the comb if we shake it faster it will be discovered that the paper is little behind there is a delay in the action at the first stage at the first stage when we move the comb rather slowly we find a complication which is magnetism magnetic influences have to do with charge in relative motion so magnetic forces and electric forces can really be attributed to one field as two different aspects of exactly the same thing a changing electric field cannot exist without magnetism if we move the charge paper farther out the delay is greater then an interesting thing is observed Although the forces between two charge objects should go inversely at the square of the distance it is found when we shake a charge that the influence extends very much farther out that we would guess at first sight that is the effect falls off more slowly than the inverse square here is an analog if we are in a pool of water and there is a floating cork where close by we can move it directly by pushing the water with uh, another cork if you look only at the two corks all you would see would be that one move immediately responds to motion of the other there is some kind of interaction between them of course what we really do is to disturb the water the water then disturbs the other cork we could make up a law that if you push the water a little bit an object close by in the water would move if it were farther away of course the second cog would scarcely move for we move the water locally on the other hand if we jiggle the cog a new phenomena is involved in which the motion of the water moves the water there etc and waves travel away so that by jiggling there is a influence very much farther out an oscillatory influence that cannot be understood from the direct interaction therefore the idea of direct interaction must be replaced with the existence of the water or in the electrical case with what we call the electromagnetic field the electromagnetic field can carry waves some of these waves are light other are used in radio broadcast but the journal name is electromagnetic waves these oscillatory waves can have various frequency the other thing that is really different from one wave to another is the frequency of the oscillation if we shake a charge back and forth more and more rapidly and look at the effects we get a whole series of different kind of effects which are all unified by specifying by one number the number of oscillations per second 
the usual pickup that we get from electric currents in the circuits in the wall of building has a frequency of about 100 cycles per second if we increase the frequency to 500 or 1000 kilo cycles 1 kilo cycle is equal to 1000 cycles per second we are on the air for this is the frequency range which is used for radio broadcast of course it is has another to do with the air we can have radio broadcast without any air if we again increase the frequency we can come into the range that is used for fm and tv going still further we use certain short waves for example for radar still higher and we do not need an instrument to see the stuff we can see it with the human eye in the range of frequency from 5 into 10 raised to 14 to 10 raised to 15 cycles per second our eye would be the oscillation of the charged comb if you could shake it that fast as red blue or violet light depending on the frequency frequencies below this range are called infrared and above it ultraviolet the fact that we can see in a particular frequency range makes the part of the electromagnetic spectrum no more impressive than the other part from the physicist standpoint but from a human standpoint of course it is more interesting if we go up even high in frequency we get x-rays x-rays are nothing but very high frequency light if we go still higher we get gamma rays these two term x rays and gamma rays are used almost synonymously usually electromagnetic waves coming from the nuclear are called gamma rays while those of high energies from the atoms are called x rays but at the same frequency there are indistinguishable physical no matter what their source if we go to still higher frequencies, say 10 raised to minus 24 cycle per second, we find that we can make those waves artificially. For example, with the sine crotron here at the clutch, we can find electromagnetic waves with the stupidly high frequencies with a thousand times more rapid oscillation in the waves found in cosmic rays. These waves cannot be controlled by us. Like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for the further videos.